Hello and welcome to ITE 1122 Fundamentals of Programming. I am Khalna Vijay Gunratna and this course is offered as a part of the Bachelor of Information Technology External Degree Program conducted by the University of Morotua. This will be the first lesson for this course. Here, you can see the color coding we will be using throughout the presentation. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the color coding. As you all know, we now live in a highly digital world and we interact with a large number of computers on a daily basis. Computers are not only your laptops or desktops, the smartphones we use, the numerous handheld devices and many other equipment like washing machines and remote controllers at home are computers. Computers are powerful machines that can process a lot of data much faster than we humans can. But what is it that makes these computers function? Computers process data under the control of sets of instructions called computer programs. These computer programs make computers functional. Programmers write these programs specifying the functionality of the computer. So what exactly is a computer program? It is a sequence of instructions written using a computer programming language to perform a specified task by the computer. The two important terms to notice here are sequence of instructions and computer programming language. In order to better understand these, let us take an example of a human program written in English. Here is a set of instructions to find the KFC in the town. It would look like this. Go straight, drive half a kilometer, take a left, drive another kilometer, and find the KFC on your own. right. Computer programs are also known as computer software. These programs can be a simple line displaying a line of text on the screen, or it can even be a large complicated program like a video game that you probably have played in your childhood. These programs can range from a few lines of codes to millions of lines of code, depending on the type and scale of the application we are building. Computer program instructions are also called program source code and computer programming is also called program coding. As we discussed earlier, even though a computer is a powerful machine, a computer is just a dumb box without the computer programs to control it. These programs make the computers functional. We saw the term computer programming language earlier. Just like there are a large number of natural languages that we use to communicate among humans, like Sinhala, Tamil, and English, we need a language to communicate with computers too. These languages are used to specify the instructions that a computer needs to execute. These are known as computer programming languages. And the act of writing these computer programs is called as computer programming. Directly, computers only understand machine language that is often represented by ones and zeros. What you see below here are some machine language pieces of code. However, it is very inconvenient for programmers to directly write code in machine language. And this is why assembly languages were introduced earlier on. So assembly languages, in, in assembly language, programmers code in English-like abbreviations. As you can see, these simple instructions here, like load base pay, add over pay, and store gross pay, is actually calculating uh, the gross pay 
that is supposed to be calculated for uh, management software in assembly language. Translator programs called assemblers were developed to convert early assembly language programs to machine language. Because as you remember, I said, machines or computers only understand machine language, but these more English-like and human-like instructions had to be converted to machine language. And this was done using translators called assemblers. But still, this still needed a large number of instructions to be written, and this was not very convenient to write long pieces of code. High-level languages were then introduced to make programming even easier. The code we saw earlier for calculating the gross pay can be written simply as one statement like this using a high-level programming language. Gross pay equals base play plus overtime pay. As you can see, it's very intuitive for us humans to understand this. It's very similar to human languages and can easily be understood as mathematical expressions. These high-level programs must be converted into machine-readable code for machines to understand them. This is done using translators called compilers and interpreters. Today, there are a large number of high-level programming languages used. Here are some of the most popular programming languages. Out of these languages, we will be looking at Java in this course. Java cleverly uses a compiler as well as an interpreter to convert the high-level source code that we write to machine code. As you all know, Today, computer programs are being used in almost every field, from fields ranging from agriculture to medicine, to entertainment, to defense, to communication, to astronomy, and all household equipments and household items are controlled by computers today. For example, you can see <coughs> several uh, programs and uses and applications of computers listed down here. Programs like MS Word, MS Excel, Adobe Photoshop, Internet Explorer, and Chrome are all computer programs running on your computer. Also, computer programs are used to develop graphics in movies. Computer programs are used in the medical industry for taking x-rays and other medical examinations. And on your smartphones, it is computer programs that control your mobile phone and make mobile phones very useful. Someone who can write computer programs, or in other words, someone who can do computer programming is called a computer programmer. So how does one become a programmer? How does one approach the problem at hand? An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to resolve any problem you have. An algorithm is an effective method expressed as a finite set of well-defined instructions. What does this mean? An algorithm must have a limited number of steps that is countable, but it is used in, in a very specific way. It, and from if you follow this algorithm, from the if you follow this set of instructions from the beginning to the very end, you will find the solution to your problem. So an effective computer programmer lists down all the steps required to resolve a problem before writing the actual code. This is very important because by the time you actually start coding, you must know what your solution is. That is how you will become an effective programmer. A simple example of an algorithm to find out the largest number from a given list of numbers is given below. This is how you will write an algorithm. This is not code, but this is the set of instructions that we will follow to get the solution for your problem. And later on, a good programmer will be able to efficiently write code that will ex execute this particular algorithm. First, you get a list of numbers from L1, L2 to N, the number of items in the list. And then assume L1 is the largest number, largest equals L1. 
take the next number from the list and then do the following. If largest is less than Li, then largest equals that particular element. And if the, that particular element is the last element of the list, then print value stored in the largest as the largest element in the list and come out of the process. Or repeat the same process starting from step three. We earlier spoke about uh, computer programming languages. And we also noticed how it is similar, how it is, how it is increasingly becoming similar to human languages. But just like human interface languages, such as Hindi, English, Spanish, French, etc., are made of several elements like verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and conjunctions, computer programming languages also are made up of elements like these. These basic elements include a programming environment, basic syntax, data types, variables, keywords, basic operation, operators, decision-making, loops, numbers, characters, arrays, strings, functions, and file input and output. In this course, we will be using Java to learn the fundamentals of programming. Even though we will be using Java, we will be learning a lot of concepts that are applicable to many programming languages like Java SC can be downloaded freely from oracle.com. The link is provided on the Moodle course page, or you can simply search for download Java on Google. You can then go to the Oracle site and download a version based on your operating system. Then follow the instructions to download Java and run the .exe file to install Java on your machine. The next step is to set the environment variables to point to the correct installation directories. Here is how you can set up the path in a Windows computer. Let's assume Java was installed at this directory. Now, right-click on my computer and select properties. Click on environment variables and variables button under the advanced tab. Alternatively, you can simply search for environment variables on your Windows search. Then edit the path variable so that it points to the Java executables. If your path currently only reads as C Windows System32, then add the Java bin directory to it so that it will look as shown in the slides. Then your path will look as C Windows System32 semicolon C program files, Java, JDK, and bin, which is the folder where Java is Java executables are located at. After you have successfully installed Java in your computer and added Java to the path variable, you must be able to write your first simple Java program. I will show you how to write your Hello World Java program using a simple text editor. First, create a new text document. Now, copy paste this piece of code in your own text document. This simple piece of code will print out Hello World when executed. Now, make sure to save this document and rename it as hello.java. After this, you can open the command prompt from the Windows address bar by typing CMD on the address bar and pressing enter. Now, in your command prompt, type java c hello.java. This only works because you are in the directory where your text file is already located. As you can now see, it has created a hello.class file here. Now you can type java hello, and this should execute your program.
And as you can see, it prints hello world in the command prompt. In our hello world program, we use a simple notepad to write our Java program. But there are other integrated development environments or IDEs that can be used to make coding in Java much more convenient. NetBeans is one such IDE that is free and open source and can be downloaded from the link provided. Eclipse is another IDE for Java and can be downloaded using this link provided. With this, we come to the end of our first lesson in Fundamentals of Programming. See you in the next lesson.